right. Well, hello, hello. Um, I have come on just a few minutes early. Uh, this is a recorded uh, class, and just so everybody knows. That way I can post it to our channel later. Uh, and I'm really excited about today. Uh, the, the gnome is going to be kind of fun, I think. We've got a few minutes, so um, I just wanted to hop on here just a few minutes early, uh, let you know what I've got here. We've got people. people yet. I got a new phone, so. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm also trying to learn how to use that as we go with our class today. Um, my name is Beth Gaff and I'm the systems manager here at the Peabody Public Library. Uh, this is our monthly virtual painting class. Um, I find painting to be quite relaxing and uh, I really enjoy doing it and it's kind of a de-stressor for me when I actually get the time to sit down and paint. So, sorry, I have a squeaky table. Uh, so I, I like to bring that joy to others. So if you're somebody that likes a kind of a relaxed type of atmosphere, then this is kind of up your alley. Um, all of these paintings that we do here uh, on the virtual painting classes, um, I have found this fabulous website. It's called uh, stepbystepainting.com, I believe, or stepbystep.com, um, but it's all by step-by-step -step painting. So if you go to your search engine, type in step-by-step -step painting, you're probably going to find a lot of the pictures that we do here. Uh, that is where I get our stencils. That is where I post all of the stuff that she has on there uh, for the classes that we do. And none of these I have painted prior. So we paint them together. So what we get is what we get, right? Um, however, let me see if I am able to... I'm looking for, okay, here we go, there we go. All right, so um, I do have a couple of caddies that have some paint in them. Um, however, these are the primary colors that I'm gonna be using to do my painting today. Uh, so as long as you have, you know, the colors that you wanna do, I'm all about creativity. Um, and this is my panel that I'm using. It's just an eight by 10. And uh, yeah, so I'm all about creativity. So uh, go out on a whim, try something new, change the colors around, make the sky the yours. Uh, that's what this class is all about is just being creative, relax and being yourself. So this here is uh, the canvas panel that I'll be using. Uh, these are the three primary brushes. I always have a a big brush, a medium sized brush and a pointy brush. I've got my water. I always have my fan because sometimes I overheat a little. And uh, then of course our painting that we're doing today and I've already cut my stencil. I've made myself some carbon paper already uh, to trace on that stencil and that's just plain paper with a pencil. Uh, but this is going to be um, hopefully our finished product today. So wishing us the best of luck. And let me see what time I've got here. All right, it is 3.30, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with our class. Uh, and you do not have to be present in order to participate because I do post this on our streamed channel later. And then you're able to watch it there. I have been teaching a lot of classes today, so I apologize for my voice. Um, I have lost it a few times already. I do have a handy drink that I'm going to get. So go ahead and get all your supplies together, get your stuff around, uh, and we're going to get started here in just a second. I also managed to uh, spill coffee all over myself today, so it's just been a great day overall. And it's going to get better because we're going to do an awesome. All right, so this is my panel that I'm going to be working with, that you see here. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and paint our background. So in the painting itself, detach it. In the painting itself, they've used like a turquoise blue or a blue and a white. 
uh, which is what I'm going to use as well because I do like those colors. But you can use whatever two colors you would like to do. And I would recommend too, um, the white and then some other kind of color that you want to do. So I have my paint tray. It's just a styrofoam tray. I'm going to get some white paint. And I have what's like a turquoise colored type paint. And I'm sure your list tells you the exact name for these. And I'm going to use the biggest brush that I have uh, right here. And I am just going to do a half and a half. So I'm going to put half of one color on my brush and I'm going to put half of the other color on my brush. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to start to paint this going downwards. And I'm going to do that all the way down to the bottom. So I'm just going to continue doing that. And uh, I will show you as we go on here. I could do it a little bit faster if I have it laid down. Now you can also take your brush and dip it in your water and kind of just tap it off. And you can use that to blend these colors. Now, if you're noticing that you're getting uh, one color a little bit darker than the other, don't panic you can just go in and grab that other color and throw it in. So for instance, I have a lot of blue going, uh, but I want some more white in there. So I just grab some white and I'm coming in and I'm streaking it, up, streaking it in there, which will dull it out. So now I've got some streaks in there as well. So we can just keep doing that. And these, uh, even though these, oops, even though these are canvas panels, uh, they do still have sides. So we're gonna wanna paint our sides. You can paint them all blue for now. And then after that dries, uh, then we're going to be able to paint the sides the other colors that we want them to be. Just seeing if there's anything that comes in. That's okay. Uh, if they come in later, we'll get them in. And I do want to thank you for all the views. I did have a lot of views on the painting class. Uh, last month, and I really appreciate those views. So keep them coming. And I'm still just doing that half and half. And I'm grabbing my sides, making sure I'm getting those sides. Now, if you're using a 3D canvas, you'd still be getting those sides. Not worried about the bottom because we're going to end up doing green on that. Uh, so we're going to end up painting over that green. So that's not vital right now. But I'm just doing half and half. Painting it all the way down to the bottom. That's what I have going right now. So, and I'm just going to do that entire canvas like that. My table is very squeaky. I don't know why. If you hear squeaking, it's my table here. I was teaching a class earlier and I think maybe the kids sat on it, but I'm not sure. I don't have, I did not see that anybody sitting on it, but we had a lot going on over here. This table, so I'm sure. See if I can get a new one for us next time so we don't have to listen to the squeaks. All right, so I am just finishing that up. I want to make sure that I go ahead and get um, all the color I want in it because our next step is going to be actually, and I'm going to go get a hairdryer, uh, is actually going to be putting on the gnome. So we need to make sure this is as dry as we can possibly get it before we can put that gnome on. So if you've got it really, really layered, you may want to go see if you can grab yourself a hairdryer. Okay, I'm going to grab a hairdryer, but let me show you what I got going on here. So that's my current background, and I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to go get a hair dryer so I can dry it faster. Yeah, so I've got my little portable hair dryer. I don't know why I keep forgetting to grab that before class. Yeah, I'm all set. All set up, ready to go. But am I? <laughs> Not really. 
I've had a very busy day today, so. All right, so I'm just drying my canvas. That's all I'm doing. Getting um, all that wetness to, um, if you see shiny, then it's wet. So you wanna make sure you're getting that all covered. So this would be a really good time if you haven't yet while we're waiting for this to dry, to go ahead and get your carbon paper ready. Get your carbon paper ready if you have to make it or if you have purchased it, which I have some at home and they need to dig for it and find it so I don't have to keep making it. It worked out really well with the um, bicycle that we did last week. Getting my canvas dry so I can trace on my gnome because we're going to be tracing on that gnome next. So if you don't have a pencil, make sure you get one, or perhaps maybe you want to try to freehand it. You're my hero if you do. I have a hard time with gnomes and people. My thing is more landscaping. So we want it nice and dry. Put that so, here's what my background looks like currently. Hopefully you can see it. All right. Got a little bit of the top still. And then we're going to be ready to trace this on. Don't panic. Putting on the gnome is not going to be as complicated as you think it might be. It's all about tracing. Now, when you go to trace it on, word of advice, once you start, don't stop. Don't lift it. Don't look at it. You just keep going until you're done all the way through. Because once you pick it up off of your canvas, you're never going to get it back in the same spot again. It just It's just almost impossible and inevitable. <laughs> so you're better off just to keep on keeping on when you go to trace this on. All right, I think I have mine dry enough that I can trace it on. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna take carbon side and I'm gonna do it down. So it's carbon side down. Might want to put it on to the edge so you know where the edge is. So I I butted it up to like the edge of it. So I, I do have a lip coming off of it. That way I know where the end is. And take a look at our picture of where our little Nomi guy wants to be and where we want him to stand. And I'm going to take him and I'm going to just put it on top of this white. And I'm just going to trace him up. So as mentioned, I can't lift it now because I've already started tracing. But when I'm done tracing this on, I will show you what it looks like. So we've got our carbon side down. Sorry for the squeaky table. <laughs> we've got our carbon side down and we are tracing on the gnome right now. And once you get going, you just got to keep on keeping on because if you try to lift this while you're tracing it on, you're never going to get it back where it belongs. It's just how it is. Try not to forget anything while you're doing it. And I'm really hoping that this is going to trace on good. Definitely not guaranteed, though. Hopefully, I can fill in the spots. So we are tracing on our gnome right now. That's why there's quiet. Get this traced on. 
And then we're going to paint it in. All right, I think I'm done. Checking to make sure I haven't missed it. Yeah, I think I'm good. All right. Okay. So I've got him traced on. And now I'm going to start painting him in. So they've used a few different greens. So I've got a dark green. Got a dark green. And I've kind of got a medium green. got like four different greens here. I'll take a picture and show you. But I have several different greens and we're just gonna kind of see what we can do with all of them. So let me flip us. So here's all the greens. I've got a hunter green, kind of like a shamrock green, a uh, spring green and a lime green. So that's what I'm gonna work with. And I am gonna start, oh, okay. And then I have like a red and an orange for the beard. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. So I'm just putting this side by side, see what we can do with those. And I don't necessarily have, so I have kind of this nudist color, kind of like a beige. So we're going to use a little bit of that and a little bit of brown for his skin. Let me flip this back. So I've got, those are all the colors I'm working with. These two are used for my background. There's all my colors. Let's see if anybody... That's okay. It'll be posted later. So, okay. So now we're just ready to paint it in. And it looks like by looking at the pictures, they've painted it in and then they put the white stripes in after. So we're just going to use some different green and start doing that. So I'm going to use my medium brush, not using my biggest one. Actually, I'm going to use my pointy brush and do a little bit less. So I'm just going to grab some of these greens. There's no right or wrong. And I'm going to start. Start painting. In. And I'll show you as I go on here what I am doing. Right now, I'm just taking kind of the darkest green I have and I'm just outlining his hat. So I'm just outlining his hat right now with the darkest green I have. And then I'll go in and, and paint it in, but that kind of gives me a little bit better feel of my area. And I'm just working on his hat right now. I'm just following these lines that I've traced in there. So, so there's kind of an outline of this mat. And now I can take this medium brush and I can grab some of that darker green. 
that shamrock and just a couple of different greens. And I'm going to go sideways like this. Before we were going down, now we're going to go back and forth. And I'm just going to start painting it in. You know, if you're finding your brush is too big and you can always downsize to the smaller brush. Which I think I might do. Our area is not real big, so. Especially when you get around the buckle. Just want something thin around there. Water. Okay, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just painting this in. This is just the hat above the buckle. I really enjoy painting. It really relaxes me and it makes me concentrate on other things and I don't have to worry about, you know, things that are bothering me as much. And I can focus on something else that I can be creative with. I can't believe that's creepy to do. So I am just painting uh, the hat. I'm still working on my hat here. And just kind of getting it taken care of. And then I'm going to move on to the beard. So we're just kind of moving from the top down. Sorry about the squeaking. It's this table. i show you from there. I'm just painting out the hat. It makes it go a lot easier when you have a stencil to use. When you have to freehand a lot of this, it doesn't go as smoothly. <laughs> With us having this outline, we can stay in the lines a little bit better. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking a lot today. All right, so I'm just blending in my hat colors right now. Just blending in my hat colors. Now what we're going to do, and it doesn't matter if it's wet or not for us to do this, but I'll show you. <laughs> so there's my hat colors. And now I thought if I don't have any black, I'm going to need it. So go ahead and grab black also amongst all the other colors. And you should still have white from your sky. So we'll probably just use that up. Um, but now we are going to oh okay, his hat continues underneath that buckle. See his hat continues. So go ahead and continue painting underneath that buckle. I may outline it first like I did the other thing. Okay. 
Okay. So then we'll be ready to paint that in as well. But we are going to need the black and we are going to need the white um, to give it some accent and to give it the stripe look and everything. Plus, we're going to be working on that buckle, which is going to require some black. So I'm painting in my hat portion right now. That's the bottom of that one. Just adding some of this darker green in. Darken it up a little. So then we're going to be ready to do his beard. And with his beard, we are going to want to use um, more of our medium brush because we're going to pull it down. So I, and actually we're going to go sideways like this and pull them down. So I'm going to start with orange. And this is going to be right below that second part of that hat. Then I'm going to implement very, very little of that red, honestly, just very, very little. I'm meeting it right up to the green. And actually, you may even want to use your point brush because that's a very, very funny area in there. Keep forgetting how small this is. But we're still doing that down motion. All the way up to his nose. Still doing that down motion. And I will show you what I'm working with here. So we're still doing that down motion and getting that beard filled in all the way down throughout. His beard goes down quite far, so, and we're just using our pointy brush to do that because it's a very fine area, and a lot of these little jaggeds for the beard are very small. So we're just going through it. All the way up to the gold, the big pot of gold. And around the gold, I'm just um, dabbing even so I don't go too far in. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I'm done with the beard. All the way through the beard. Let me show you. All right, so right now we're just painting our beard, making a handsome devil out of him here.
Okay. So once this dries, you can kind of take a better look at it to see if there's any more you would want to add to it. That's a really good start on it, for sure. And we can even work on trying to make it a little bit more fluffy. So you can come back to that. So we're just going to kind of move on here. Uh, let's go ahead and do the buckle. So we're going to get the black and do the sides of the buckle. Make sure your brush isn't too wet. It just happened to be. So we're painting our buckle that's around it. I'll show you. And while we have this black, and we're working with it, we might as well go ahead and do some accenting. So if we look at our final project here, we can see that they actually do have black lines going through just very faintly around it. So, just taking a little bit of black. I've got my, my pointy, and I'm just coming in and doing an outline, not a dark one, uh, and a little bit of it just to get a feel for the shape of my hat. So I just added a very little just to give myself a little bit of shape to that. Hat. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to take some of that white that we have left over from our sky and go ahead and put some stripes in. I forget we have a bottom section. Now I'm just going to. You just want it very light. You don't want anything real dark, just something very faint. And it kind of just gives it that curve that it needs. You kind of get an idea of the positioning of it. So you can see I have lines in there now. And they have a little bit of a black outline in between his beard and that other part of that um, hat. So we're just kind of outlining that as well. Now that our top is uh, kind of dried, we can come in with some darker color and put it on the hat as well. Now that we have a dry surface. So we've got a little bit of dark up here. So. Okay. I'm going to go back to my beard. 
grab these colors again, just kind of lighten it up a little, go in, give them a rough look. How are we doing? Good. Try to keep these as close to an hour as possible. Because I know we all have lives. So I just went in and kind of touched up his beard a bit. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to grab some yellow for that bubble and. I'm actually going to put it next to my brown, um, but I'm going to use the yellow to paint in the buckle. And I'm going to use this yellow down below. And I'm where my gold is, I'm just going to start dabbing there. So I'm just going to do a dab motion. And I'm going to actually grab a little bit of brown while I do it. And I'm going to go back and grab some of that yellow. if we can get a gold effect going on. And I'm just doing it where the gold is supposed to be. So if you look at your picture, you can kind of see, and I'll show you here. It's pretty funny how. So there's my gold. And I'm just doing some dabbing with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown. And I'm just doing that right up to his beard line. Swap in between. And we may have to revisit that. Okay, so his outfit is green also. So we can start to paint in his outfit with some of this green. And there's really no right or wrong to it. And it looks like they may have used some of that limeish color. So I'm going to change my colors around a bit here. And I'm just going to paint downwards. And I'm still using my pointy. So I'm just starting to paint in his outfit. Now. All right, so we're just painting in his outfit, changing out some of my colors. Okay. 
Menschen passiert. And on the other side, um, almost done, believe it or not. Don't forget his arm. I'm just painting his arm sleeves now. My gold looks like popcorn. That's funny. Okay. I think we're good on that. So I painted in his outfit. Now I'm going to paint in his little cauldron. And that's black or his little pot here. I find outlining at first makes it a lot easier to paint in. I cannot believe how squeaky this cable is. I'm so sorry if you can hear that. It's very annoying. I'm going to have to change out tables before we meet again here. It's making me crazy. All right, so I painted in his little cauldron down there. So now I have kind of a nudish color. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and paint in his nose and his hands. So ours will look just a little different, but that's okay. I'm going to grab a little bit of black with that. Just kind of accent it out. It's all clear. All right, I can go back in and paint that. So they've just kind of put a little glare on him and they've used a few different colors. So I'm kind of trying to even those out now. And they put a little glare. I've got his nose. Now I'm going to do his hands the same way. With my other phone, when I'd get a phone call, it would shut off my video. So I'm really glad. Gotcha. To shut it off. All right, so I'm just painting in his hands. Grabbing a little bit of that brown while I do it. Maybe. I don't want to mix very well. All 
Okay. So there's our hands. And now we're ready for our feet. So they've used just a black in the brown, basically. So I'm going to pull out some black. It looks a little brown. And you just kind of got to improvise. So as you're painting this, you can kind of We'll look at your picture and determine what needs to be done. And like it's got a pretty good point. Let's take Shine that up. And we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Yeah. It also has a little shiny in it. Okay. So there's my shoes. So my gnome guy is pretty much done. So now I'm ready for grass. And this is the easiest part. So we're just using that same pointy brush. All three greens we've been using. And we're just going to start going on this side. We're just going to start going this way using all those different colors we have. On the other side, we're going to do it opposite. So let me get started here. And we do need to put a little bit more accent in this. So we'll work on that too. So right now, I'm just Blading it up. Got a lot of blades going. Different colored greens. That's kind of the idea on one side. And underneath with him standing. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. You can just still work on that. And they've actually added a little bit of black in there too. So, and it's going to be very faint though, because black is very dominant. So you don't want to get it too. Now I'm just working on the other side with the blades. And there's really no right around. Blades of grass are blades of grass. So we see them come in all different kinds of shapes, sizes. Angles. Not touch a black in any team.
and you can really go crazy with this and depending on you know how much weedage or whatever you want to have in it like foliage type stuff how many weeds are in there and so forth but you kind of get the idea so i've got some grass growing Now, um, they've put some white dots in as kind of a, uh, baby breath kind of look. So still using that pointy, um, we're going to go ahead and make some a little bit larger ones coming out. little bit larger ones and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So those just have some little stems coming out like that. So that's where we can kind of dab it with the white. So we're just going to do a few little dots on the ends of these. And you can do those white dots however frequently you would like. It's your painting. It really does make it pop and look nice. So we're just doing some white dots. Make it kind of pop out. Of now, while we've got this white, we can go ahead and put some accents uh, in our Cauldron or our little, so we can put some accents here. And they do have accent on our hands. And so we have some separation with our clothes Ooh, a little bit. So they've from our clothes into our grass. Okay. And we're just continuing with those white dots wherever you would randomly like to. Um, then we're going to work on the um, shamrock hearts. Actually, I'm sorry. Okay. So with the shamrock hearts, and we are almost done. Look at us. With the shamrock hearts, we are just going, and there's my white patterns. We're just going to pull out two larger ones that we're using kind of that darker colored. So I'm going to have one come in here. Here. And it's literally hearts. So I'm going to do a heart here. I may need to turn my canvas. Do a heart here. Okay. So I've just done hearts. So I would do the same thing on the next one and then the third one. And then you can kind of paint them in a little bit. Now, my suggestion would be after you use this, before you paint them in,
go ahead and outline them in a little bit of black. So that way, while you're painting them in, they're already formed. And I feel like that might help when you go to paint them in a little bit. All right, so while I've got those two done, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of start painting it. Go ahead and pull that black in also. Gives it a little bit of accent. Not too much. Though. Go back and get more of that green. And grab a little bit of this white just so it kind of lays down with some of that green color a little. Okay. I can always trace over that black with some more of that green. But there's that one. No, I didn't do that. Uh, Quite challenging, actually. Here we go. All right, and then I just have one more to do on the other side. So here's that. And I have one more to do. So we're just making these hearts. I'm outlining them in the black now. So hopefully they can keep their shape.
So you can look at your picture in comparison to what we just did. Well, there's that word. And fix it according to how you like it. That's pretty much it, guys. I do need it. You can add some more of those white dots for yourself. So, I'm gonna add some more white dots. Kind of touching up my first set of hearts here. All right. There we have it, folks. And there is our finished project. Obviously, we could do more touch-ups if we wanted to. We could add more stuff if we wanted to. Um, but this is the gist of that painting. So, just going to do a few touch-ups. And we have it. This was a fun one. I have not painted this before, so I like new paints for sure. All right, there we have it. There is our finished painting for the month. Pat yourself on the back. You did an amazing job. Good job. For our first time doing it, I think we did excellent. And I'd love to see your paintings. So, you can send them my way. <clears throat> we got these all done in an hour. Way to go. All right. Be looking for our next painting next month, guys. I had a great time. Thanks for being with me. Thank you for joining me with virtual painting classes. Um, it's an excellent time for you to relax, you rewind, unwind, and have some fun. So hopefully that's how it went today. And uh, I will see you in the next painting class.